There are three main types of induction that you, you'll learn in discrete math. And the first was weak induction, and that's where you had one base case. And then you proved that the k plus one element still has the same property. And then strong induction was where you had multiple ga base cases and then proved the k plus one. Structural induction is a bit more abstract. You don't like explicitly do k plus one. Um, you're just looking at like the next elements. And this induction is applied specifically on recursively defined data structures such as sets or lists or trees. I've noticed in CS182 that they love the um, tree problems for structure induction, so that's why I'm focusing this video on that. And a basic overview is, like if you were to do it on trees, um, the base case, remember just like weak induction, you want to show that whatever you're trying to prove works on the smallest possible case. And so that would just be like, um, like the smallest possible tree would be if you only had one node. And so you, you're just trying to prove that um, it works for only one node. And then your step would be to show that it works for the entire tree. And so what you would do is you would think about this recursively and look at the left and the right. Um, and because you've proven both the base and the step, and this can be abstractly large, sorry. Um, we don't know how big these trees are, but um, if you've done the step in the base case, then you've proven the properties true for the entire tree, right? So let's take a look at an example problem. Okay, so we're given a theorem and we're saying if T, which is some tree, is a full binary tree, and let's just pause and review some vocab. Binary refers to the number of children a node can have. Remember, these circles are a node. And Think about like the word binary, usually that refers to like ones and zeros, so like you have two options. So like you can e either have like one, two, or um, zero children. Um, as opposed, there are some other trees where you can have like um, three children or four children, whatever. Um, but we're only looking at binary trees in this problem. And then also, it has to be full, which means that every single node has to either have two or zero children. So our example here, this is a full binary tree, but if we erased one node, this is not a full binary tree because we're missing, um, we only have one child. But if I erase this again, this is considered full because every node has two or zero children. Okay. So they want us to prove that if it's a full tree, then the number of nodes um, in the tree will be less than or equal to two to the height of the tree, plus one, minus one. And remember, when you're counting the height of trees, you always start from zero and then one, two. So this tree has a height of two. Okay, but before we dive in, let's just think about why this is true. Like, let's apply this to our little example tree we have here. So n of t has to be less than or equal to two. The height is two of this tree. Okay, and then we simplify this, this equals 7, so the number of nodes in this tree has to be less than or equal to 7. And this example has exactly 7, but if I erase these, this is still a binary tree with a height of 2, um, but there are only 5 nodes, so that's why we have to have the less than symbol as well. And basically this can apply for any size tree, so let's prove that. Um, and let me just redraw this to show that, like, this can be for any tree. Um, this is supposed to be, like, a dot, dot, dot symbol. Like, there could be more children. Okay. 
so base case remember we're proving for the smallest possible case and that's only if there's one node in the tree like this and then let's plug in so nft is one less than or equal to two the height was height is zero we just simplify this statement is just true. So we've proven our base case. And then our hypothesis is pretty easy. I'm actually just gonna copy paste it. It's just a theorem that they gave us. So remember, when you're trying to do your recursive step, you always want to find a way to plug in your um, inductive hypothesis. So the step wants to show that this also works for the left and right um, and the root. So it works for the entire tree. So we would say the number of nodes in this tree um, and it's like abstractly large tree would be um, one, which is the root. Root, um, when I say that, it just means like the the very first node and then it's going to be plus the number of nodes in the left and then plus the number of nodes in the right subtree okay and we already know what like the n function does by our inductive hypothesis so this is where we can replace stuff so i have to use the less than or equal to symbol and then I'm just going to do 2 to the h of L plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 to the h of R plus 1 minus 1. Okay, um, we can just cancel some terms out if we're looking at the 1, I copy and paste this. Okay, so the ones will cancel out here. Okay, that's pretty much all we can simplify for now. Now what we can do is, again, we need to think a little bit abstractly. If we think about this, if we had the left plus the right, it has to be less than or equal to two times the max of the left and the right. Um... And just think about why this is true. So technically, the left and the right could be different sizes. Like, um, the left could only have one node, and then the right could have, like, a hundred. Um, and so we know that the total amount of nodes has to be, um, like, if we did the max of one of these and we multiplied it by 2, then we know it has to be greater than. Or technically it could be equal if they're both the same size, but um, that's one way we can do that because we're working with inequalities in this proof. So let's replace that. So we can say 2 times... Um, and let me also label, I was just, I'm just replacing these two with this statement now. Two times the max of, um, two to the h of the left plus one, comma, two to the h of the right plus one, minus one. Minus one should be on the outside. Okay, and then uh, we should know that it doesn't really matter. If the bases are the same, then we can um, do the max of the exponents because those are really the only um, differences in the left and the right. So let's just rewrite this. I realize I put the thing in the wrong place and then let's bring down our minus one okay and so 
again, you need to think a bit abstractly for this. So if you think about the height of the left plus one, that's essentially your left plus your root node, right? And that's the same with your right tree. So whatever is the maximum of this, um, it's, it's basically like, yeah, it's basically the height of your tree, right? Because um, your height is defined on like the last leaf node. So this is the same thing as two to the two of H of T. So your entire tree minus one. And then, yeah, number of trees. And again, this is some um, exponent um, simplification because we just want to rewrite it in the form we had above. And now we have proven that um, the property applies for any size of tree. So this would be our concluding step right here. We've proven that it works for the left, the right, and the root.